taking a ponder as Donegan does have a copy of Monastery Swisper that has been turned sideways. You just see the life totals here, 20 and 19 in favor of Donegan. Donegan with two lands in play. Looks like he's already resolved a brainstorm as well. Van Meter, a little ponder action here. And it looks like he'll be keeping and drawing. Yeah, so Dylan, as you, as you mentioned last week in a dominant performance with Blue Red Delver on the way to his Invitational victory, did not change much from last week to this week. Why change it if it isn't broken? No, he did a fantastic job last weekend with Blue Red Delver. He did a fantastic job, period. The tournament was his from the start. He needed to win it to qualify for this tournament, and he did just that. You see Van Meter in his graveyard. He's already resolved it in Tomb to get a Sphinx of the Steel win, and it looks like he might be trying to do a little something with the Lotus Petal here. It's a one shot of mana. And this is going to be a reanimate that he's going to attempt to cast Donegan. Well, he had better have an answer to this, and he does. Force of Will, removing Treasure Cruise, it looks like. And this is the big fight. Donegan's going to have to win this one. Chris is going to force back. And Dylan does have a copy of Pyroblast for Chris's Force of Will. Does he win? <laughs> well, Chris down to two cards. One of them is Brainstorm, though. We'll see how much Chris wants to fight. Apparently not that much. He's just going to pass the turn back over to Dylan. Now, Dylan, well, he has two cards in his hand now. He's going to start by playing another Swift Spear. That's going to resolve, and now he's got to get the beats going. So he's going to get it for two points of damage. Now, note, one thing to keep in mind here is that if Dylan's able to get him low enough... <laughs> and Chris just knew he had it set up. Yeah. If he was able to get him low enough, he'd be able to do just fine. If Dylan's reading Sphinx is still win, I don't think he has a counter spell, and that's not good news. And... Well played here by Chris Van Meter. Dylan's going to brainstorm, but I don't know what he can find here. Without a blue card in his hand, he's, there's not a force of will he's digging to. Yeah. Dylan looking at three cards right now, maybe thinking to himself, oh, I should have cast this brainstorm on my turn instead of waiting on yours. He opted to cast the Swift Spear instead and get some damage across, hoping that Van Meter was out of gas, but Van Meter set everything up beautifully with the Ponder. He had not one, but two copies reanimated. And there you do see Sphinx of Steel Wind. If that thing gets into play, it's probably over. Oh, yeah, it's, I don't, does Dylan have a way to answer it when it's on the table? I'm not certain he does. I'm doing a vapor snack check. That's what I'm currently doing. <laughs> Sometimes they do play one copy of that in this deck, but I don't see one here. Take a look at the sideboard. I don't think that's an option as well. Dylan's just going to play a copy of Delver Secrets and I suppose try to race, but it's tough to race a Vigilance lifelinking flyer as Van Meter draws a card. Dylan needed to have that brainstorm see a pair of lightning bolts. If he did, then then the six next to Chris would be exactly what he's looking for. But once Chris gets in hits with this with the large Sphinx, it's lights out. That's a brainstorm there for Van Meter. He'll draw three cards. You know, after Van Meter did lock up his invite to the Players' Championship during Season 2, things have really slowed down for him. He did win an Open Series event at Season 3, won our Standard Open during that Invitational. And that allowed him to shave, but you can see the beard is growing back very well right now. So is the rule he only gets to shave when he wins a tournament. So there was one, sh he shaved like once, two months, three months ago, and but, now it's back what, to... What's interesting is that he's actually kind of grown fond of the beard. And so he said, I actually kind of want to keep it for a little while. So that might be here to stay, whether he wins again or not. But it's been kind of, you know, a tough road for Chris over the past handful of months. He just hasn't put up the results that he's been looking for. And coming in this tournament, you know, his fever broke, I believe, on Wednesday. So he was pretty sick coming in, but... I think he's feeling just fine right now as he searches up in underground sea. And Chris knows knows he's in a great spot here, just wants to make sure he locks out Dylan's potential outs, knows that something like Vapor Snag could be a card, so Chris needs to find an answer to it to secure his victory here. It's time for a careful study. As we are being informed now that Kent Ketter did win his match over Logan Mize. Ketter playing Reanimator this weekend. We've seen Kent play Sultai Delver quite a bit, but he has switched things up a little bit. As here's a Treasure Cruise by Donegan. Now a Ponder. Of course, Treasure Cruise flipping Delver into Insectile Aberration. Donegan trying to figure out if there's some way that he can force through enough damage to win this game. Yeah, there's almost no way... He can't kill the Sphinx in combat, and every time he attacks, Chris gains six. So he has to think as though Chris were at 17 life. So Dylan would just have to put a huge amount of damage on the table, upwards of 20 to make a lethal attack. Yeah, the one thing that Donnie can find here that actually kind of gets him out of this situation, it's a unique way to go about doing it, is one Sulfuric Vortex that's in his sideboard, but that's assuming that he even brought that card in. 
Yeah, and it's not unreasonable to bring it in. Sphinx of the Steelwind is a common card for Reanimator to have. However, Chris already got a hit in with the Sphinx, and in that sense, the damage has been done. And now we are told that Steven Mann has won his match over Joe Lissette two games to zero. So the player that was able to make it in from Florida in Mann, thanks to Don against Wind, is making the most of this tournament. Lissette, mind you, uh, he is a, he's on a different strategy this weekend. Probably the only player to run debate and switch or to, de to go away from their normal strategy. Joe not on Miracles this weekend. Joe is playing Reanimator this weekend. Donegan drawing three cards off a treasure cruise. While I was watching the last match, while you and Patrick were covering and sitting amongst the players, they were, uh, it kind of, the tides were turning about who they were rooting for between Kevin Jones and Joe, and sitting next to Ross Merriam and Van Meter, just going, God, I hope Joe loses. I can't beat Miracles. It's like the worst <laughs> matchup in Ross. I, Ross, I mean, unsurprisingly, probably playing Elves this weekend, just going, yeah, I don't want any part of that. Now, to be fair, as an Elves player, if you're Ross, it's not like you suddenly want to be seeing Reanimator. <laughs> that's yeah. not good either. Yeah. Joe is bad news for Ross no matter how things break. But to hear the players just assuming that he's playing Miracles, and you probably guys saw that at home during most of our player interviews as well as players were preparing for this, you know, he is not on that deck. He's finally pulled the bait and switch, as you put it. Yeah. Here's an exhum from Chris, and that is going to do it. Chris Van Meter is going to win this match here over Dylan Donegan. Two games to zero. Reanimator is going to take down Blue Red Delver for Van Meter. He's going to move on. He's one one away from play tomorrow for Dylan Donegan. He's one loss away from being eliminated from this tournament. Right, so remember, remember in our legacy phase today, it's a three-round event. Two wins move you on, two losses kick you out. Win for Van Meter puts him one away, as you said, from, from, from day two. Loss from Donegan, he's going to have to fight for his life.